Chris. Hey, it's Chris. I know you guys love these iPad app videos and I love bringing them to you because there's been a lot of copycats of this series over the years, but you guys come here because you wanna hear about apps that nobody else is talking about and you wanna hear them first. Like today's apps, we've got an app that helps you store and remember important thoughts, a really cool app that turns your iPad into a display for your speakers, an immersive spatial audio experience for focusing and relaxing, a macOS inspired image preview app that's really handy, and much more. The goal, as always, is Number one, help you get more out of your iPad investment. Number two, help you be more productive and maybe just have some fun while we're at it. You know what? I had an amazing idea the other day and I couldn't wait to share it with you, but then I forgot about it and now you're never gonna know and I'm never gonna know what that idea was. And that is where ThinkDrop comes in. ThinkDrop's kind of like a library for your thoughts. So there's a little menu on the bottom and with one tap, you can add a thought either by text or by photo or just using your voice. So typing out an idea works great. If you made a sticky note with an idea, you can take a picture of that and just import it right there. But I love using my voice most of all. That's really cool here. So I can actually play that back or I can just look at it or I can actually start a thread of ideas underneath. Cause here's the thing, I have great ideas all the time and so do you probably. And the thing is when you capture those, it has to be a frictionless experience. And in the past, I just had an Apple note with a bunch of different bullet points. And every time I have an idea, I add one to this note. ThinkDrop, on the other hand, is bare bones. It's clutter free with exactly the features that you want and nothing else. So this is different from a notes app and it's different from a to-do app also. It's actually kind of hard to categorize, which is a good case for it being its own thing, namely an idea capture app. Now, I really love that you can make threads out of your thoughts and it's cool that you can pin thoughts to the top of your timeline here. I like that there's some stats, there's a sentiment analysis, you see the little smiley face there. And it's also cool that you can swipe on items to either delete them or swipe the other way to pin or unpin or just go ahead and tweet. And something else that's kind of cool is you can lock it with Face ID, so there's some security. And by the way, there's an iPhone app so you can sync all your thoughts and ideas across your devices. Seriously, what a cool app. I just recently found it and I'm super glad that I did. At some point or another, we all end up having either a personal or a professional project that requires us checking out some examples or some inspiration. Like maybe you're a designer and you need to collect some logo design examples. Or maybe this summer you're planning on redoing the landscaping around your place and you wanna keep some good options on hand. Maybe you're a writer and you wanna visualize and bring to life a fictional town that your character lives in. I mean, there's a million applications. Well, people in the creative world use something called a reference board to collect and organize examples of stuff that they can use as inspiration. And VizRef, V-I-Z-R-E-F, I'll link these up for you in the description, is the coolest reference board app that works the best that I've ever seen. All right, so check this out. I've got a split screen situation going on. I got VizRef open on the left, and I got the web open over on the right. And I'm just gonna come over here and grab some images right out of this article for stuff that I think looks cool. I'm just gonna tap on a few of these, keep on scrolling past the ones I don't like. And then once I get a few, I'm gonna just drag those over and drop them into VizRef and look at this. It's put a grid on here for me, arrange them all to be the exact same size. And then I can just keep dragging and dropping stuff in. And once you've got some items in your board, you can come in and you can rearrange stuff however you want to. You can come in and zoom in and out. You can grayscale images or turn them back into color. There's a light mode, there's a dark mode for whatever time of the day or whatever preference you've got. You can turn on or off the grid in the back. You can make sure that this has HD resolution. And get this, it even has animated GIF support. So you can drag a GIF right off the internet, right into this app and be able to view it. There's batch import, there's batch export, really. This is just super useful, and I think it's something that every iPad owner could probably make use of. I've got a super unique iPad app for you here. You'd never guess what it was if you are just looking at it. Totally unexpected. This is the Now Playing app, and it turns your iPad into a display for your speakers. More specifically, what it does is use Shazam to listen for the music that's playing, and then it will look up across the internet various details, extras, that it can show you about that music. I've got a HomePod on my desk, and I often listen to Siri-created radio stations while I'm working and never know who I'm listening to, what song is playing. So I gave this a try. I always got an iPad on my desk anyways. And as the music played, sure enough, it picked it up in like half a second. And all of a sudden, not only did I know who was playing, 
but also a bunch of information about the artist, the song, the record label. It's different on a per song basis. One thing that's cool here is that there's split screen support. So on one side of your iPad, you can get some work done. And on the other side, you can learn a little bit more about the music you're listening to. Now, you know, Apple hasn't come out yet with the HomePod with the screen attached, like Google's Nest Home Max or Amazon's Echo Show. And this app sorta helps make up for that. Now this gets a bunch of good reviews and I can understand why because the interface changes dynamically based on the album art and it's got some extra cool features. It actually has pretty tight Apple Music integration so if you hear a song that you like, you can add it to a playlist and you can see up in the corner here, you can heart a song, you can tell it to quit listening. There's a really simple widget and you can choose which album art you want displayed on that widget, just kind of a way to personalize your home screen. Basically, it's simple, it's clever, it just works and I love it. All right, next up, we're gonna get into a super heavy hitting Apple Pencil app in just a second. But first, it's probably not fair to the new people if I don't mention one of my favorite apps, Jasper, the AI writing assistant that can summarize and rephrase text for you, that can help you explain complicated ideas at a fifth grade level with just a click, and that can literally just write for you. That wouldn't be fair to not mention it for the new people around here, would it? All right, I'm not gonna go in depth on it, but I will mention this. What is this, like the 20th unbelievably useful iPad apps video, something like that? If you don't wanna miss the next 20 iPad app videos, then make sure you hit subscribe. Now on a serious note, one thing that you'll hear me mention pretty often is that there's two things that you can invest in life. The first is time, the second is money. And if you don't have money to invest yet, you can always invest your time until you do. And I kind of explained how you could do that in my five ways to earn six figures with an iPad video. Now, one thing that people usually love about my iPad app videos is that I show off apps that can help them invest their time more productively. But what about when you do have some extra money to invest? Well, Masterworks allows regular people like you and me to invest in art, just like the billionaires do, but for a fraction of the price. Now, I'm guessing you didn't know, like I didn't, until I ran into Masterworks when I was researching new investment opportunities that looked good, that contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500 return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. Crazy, right? So with Masterworks, you and I can invest in art from famous artists like Banksy, Picasso, and Basquiat. So if you ask me, Chris, why would you invest in Masterworks? I would say diversification. Stocks are great, crypto's cool, but blue chip art definitely seems like a power move. And art is one of the most stable assets around. So far, Masterworks has returned over 30% net IRR to investors after the sale of three paintings, one being a Banksy. Although legally, I do have to tell you that past performance is no indication of future results. So if you want to be the proud owner of a Picasso, then head over to masterworks.art slash daily tech. That's daily T-E-K-K. And you'll get access to over 80 different kinds of paintings and join a community of over 400,000 users. Now let's get back to the video. Note taking and iPads go together like copy and paste. Like Nitro and Coffee, like Frodo and Sam, like Smoke and Fire, like Zebras and Stripes. iPads and Apple Pencils are basically meant for taking notes, which is probably why there's so many great note taking apps out there. Notes Writer here is a nice alternative to both good notes and notability. And it basically does everything you'd expect a good notes app to do, but I just wanna point out some of its unique features, especially if you're coming from something like Apple Notes. So it's got a search, find, and replace function. It can view two PDFs on the screen at once. It can actually merge two PDFs into one document. That's something that I've always gone to my Mac to do, opened up Acrobat and squished two documents together. Now I can just do it here. It's got a hundred predefined paper templates. It's got custom notebook covers like you can see here. And none of this stuff, again, is something that you're gonna get with Apple's default notes app. Aside from being able to change the text color, which is kind of cool, there's this whole extra menu here, which will let you do things like have a split view or go into reader mode, presentation mode. You can have it read your notes back to you. There's a built-in name generator. There's usage statistics. The list goes on and on. So if you're looking for a full featured note-taking app that really gives you the best of three worlds, that would be typed notes, handwritten notes, and PDF notes and features, then look no further, this is a really cool option. And it also pairs really well with the paper-like screen protector. All right, let's look at this app right here. This is Portal. It's an app that basically puts some really cool nature scenery right in front of you with some accompanying soundtracks. Essentially, it's kind of like a nature-focused white noise app, but with really high quality visuals and audio. Now, I partly feel like this app is ridiculous and I partly like it. What I mean is while I'm working, it's nice to be able to pop this app on in the focus mode 
put on my noise canceling AirPods and really concentrate and get some deep work done. And in a way, it's almost kind of sort of transporting in that I'm shutting down the distracting distractions around me and I'm piping in some non-distracting distractions, if that makes sense. Now, this app is basically as good as it possibly could be for what it aims to do, which is basically to give you some sort of a connection to nature from your desk. The video is absolutely HD in quality. The audio is definitely top notch. We're talking about spatial audio here. So if you bought some really great AirPods that can handle spatial audio and you're needing a good use case, this is pretty good. The audio is definitely not an afterthought. It's all super immersive. There's some really interesting and relaxing and beautiful locations. There's a good handful of free scenes that you can check out. And then there's a whole library that's categorized. You know, there's a focus section, like I said, with you know curated collections, deep concentration, light focus, creative inspiration. But, and here comes the but, putting on headphones and staring at a screen is not the same as getting out in nature, which the website kind of sort of seems to imply. But it's a really well executed app that goes way beyond your typical white noise or focus oriented app. And check this out, if you got this going while you're working, you can actually turn it into a clock of sorts so you can get the background along with knowing what time it is. So it's kind of cool to just have on. So how about I tell you about an iPad app that you never knew you needed, but now that you know about it, you're never gonna wanna be without. The app is called Preview Mini, and it's inspired by the image preview feature that's baked into Mac OS. So while the iPad does have some amazingly full featured image editing apps like Affinity Photo, Pixelmator Photo, Photoshop, the majority of iPad users actually don't need that much firepower. That's for like creative professional types and hobbyists. What they really need is just simple, basic photo editing, and that is Preview Mini. So if you need to rotate stuff, you can. If you just need some info on stuff, you can get it. If you got an Apple Pencil, you might as well use it. You can come in here and annotate stuff. That's always useful. And then check this out. You can actually cut out pieces of an image, literally cut it out and paste it somewhere else. This tool is literally the opposite of complicated. What I really like here is that there's keyboard shortcuts and trackpad support. So if you don't have an Apple Pencil, you can still use the features and it works absolutely perfectly with the Magic Keyboard and Trackpad. I feel like this is definitely a must for iPad owners. It's 99 cents. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you found something good. And I should just warn you, I've got an iPad home screen setup video coming up. I'm gonna call it something like my ultra productive iPad home screen setup, just so you don't miss it. <laughs> and it's gonna be amazing. Lots of great widgets and stuff that are undercover that you would never know about. In fact, I had to take some of the apps out of this video to save it for that video because the widgets were the real features. So once again, I'm just saying, get subscribed so you don't miss it. Check out the Daily Tech Podcast. It's linked up down below, or you can find it in your favorite podcast app. We also have a Clips channel. People are discovering it. I upload like five to 10 Apple Focus videos over there every week, maybe more. So you're just missing out majorly if you don't have the podcast or if you're not over on the Clips channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.